Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass this morning, for the intentions of Carmel, the Redemptorists and families, friends and benefactors, and those recommended to our prayers, for the eternal repose of the soul of Dr. Dennis van der Merwe, and for his bereaved family, and for all the souls in purgatory, for the poor and suffering in body and spirit, and for peace in the world. And today we keep the feast of St. Bakita. In the, in, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the virgins praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his splendor is above heaven and earth to prepare ourselves to celebrate her feast. This mystery, let us ask the Lord for a humble and contrite heart. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Christe eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who led St. Josephine Bakita from abject slavery to the dignity of being your daughter and a a bride of Christ, grant, we pray, that by her example, we may show constant love for the Lord Jesus crucified, remaining steadfast in charity and prompt to show compassion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, 
and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord rejoice in His works. May the Lord rejoice in His works. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. Clothed in majesty and honor, wrapped in light as with a robe. May the Lord rejoice in his works. You set the earth on its foundation, immovable from age to age. You wrapped it with the depths like a cloak. The waters stood higher than the mountains. May the Lord rejoice in his works. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. There the birds of heaven build their nests. From the branches they sing their song. May the Lord rejoice in his works. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. May the Lord rejoice in his word. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every infirmity among the people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus and his disciples had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored by the shore. And when they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about the whole neighborhood and began to bring sick people on their pallets to any place where they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities or country, they led the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch 
even the fringe of his garment, and as many as touched it were made well. The Gospel of the Lord. It's very easy to recount the public events of the life of St. Bakita because they were so unusual and so remarkable. She was born in Darfur in Sudan in 1864. But by the age of seven or thereabouts, she was kidnapped by Arab slave traders and sold into slavery many, many times. Some of her masters or mistresses treated her reasonably, some were vicious, and she was tortured and beaten and branded. So it was a horrible experience. And then she somehow came into the possession of the Italian consulate, the Italian consul in Sudan, and he took her with him when he was going back to Italy. And this young child who had suffered so much, worked for the consul. And when he was due to go back to Sudan, he wanted to take her back with him, but she resisted. And because she had been looking after one of his children, taking her to school, to a convent school, then she got to know the sisters and she got to know Christianity. And so she appealed against being taken back to Sudan, and her case, sponsored and supported by the sisters, went to court, and she won her case and was free to go wherever she liked. So she stayed in Italy, in Venice, and she was baptized by the Archbishop of Venice, Giuseppe Sarto, who later became Pius X, Saint Pius X. And she was so enamored of the faith and of the life of the sisters and the beauty of their life and the tranquility and peace of the convent that she joined the sisters, uh, the Cassinonian Sisters of Charity, and spent 45 years, the rest of her life, as a sister. So that's the public uh, outline of her life. But of course she's a saint, not because of these public acts which happened to her, but because of her inner life because she exchanged one slavery for another. She experienced this human slavery, which is so cruel and evil, to become a slave of Christ. That is how Paul described himself, a slave of Christ, doulos to Christu. And she became, indeed, so enamored of Jesus that she was, in a way, a slave of Christ. She who had experienced violence in her young life, identified with the passion of Christ. And so she was marked in her life by a devotion to the passion. 
she had experienced exile from her family, from her country, from her language. But then she lived as a pilgrim, a Christian pilgrim, waiting to go home to God. And during her pilgrimage, because of her personal history, she was very sensitive to those who are in exile, to those who are made slaves in the public marketplace, what we now call trafficked people. So it was because of this inner life, this inner self-emptying, this inner kenosis and identification with Jesus and love of Jesus in his passion and in his resurrection that she grew in holiness and an aura of holiness surrounded her so that it was inevitable that when she died people would think she was indeed a saint and so her cause was introduced. Bakita is an Arab word that simply means fortunate. And quite remarkably, she said in her mature years that if she were to meet her capturers, those who kidnapped her and those who held her in slavery, if she were to meet them again, she would thank them because it was through that that in the providence of God she came to know Jesus. So she had in fact overcome uh, any bitterness, resentment or anger in her life because of what had happened, because of the gross injustices she had experienced. This is why I think Pope John Paul II, who canonized her in the year 2000, said that she was a model of real, authentic emancipation. And so we ask her intercession today for those women and children who are trafficked at this time Contemporary slavery is as rife as ever. And so we ask her intercession for those who are in that situation. And we pray also that the example of her religious life, her years, long years, 45 years of dedication to the Lord, will draw others to the same loving service. Saint Paquita, pray for us.
So let us pray together that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, Blessed Bachita, we humbly implore your majesty that, as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Bachita and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. That you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord. <clears throat> Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of Saint Paquita, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.